If you're one of the hundreds of thousands of winter recreation enthusiasts who take to our state's frozen rivers and lakes to enjoy skating, cross-country skiing, snowmobiling, and ice fishing, you need to know that hidden dangers await those who don't take proper precautions. And remember that ice is never 100% safe. Unfortunately, every year an average of seven people die falling through ice they thought was safe. In the winter of 1982, a tragic 22 deaths were recorded on Minnesota's frozen lakes. People have to be aware that ice is never a consistent thickness. It can be a foot thick in one location and just a couple of inches thick just a few yards away. When is ice safe? There is no sure answer. And just because a lake is frozen doesn't mean the ice is safe. Factors such as daily temperature, thickness, and snow cover all have an effect on the relative safety of ice. Other important factors that can weaken ice include current, the heat generated by rotting vegetation, as well as flocks of waterfowl and schools of fish. With the many factors affecting ice, the only sure way to avoid falling through is to stay off. If you're a winter angler, snowmobiler, or cross-country skier, however, staying off the ice is going to crimp your winter fun. So for those who venture out onto the ice, whether on foot or in a vehicle, here are a few tips to help lessen your chances for a breakthrough. Stay away from any area that is posted with thin ice signs, but don't assume that the ice is safe just because there are no signs. Be careful near frozen rivers. The movement of the water especially near outside bends, can make the ice treacherous. As you start out on the ice, be sure to check the thickness several times as you cross. Ice thickness can vary greatly from one area to another, even on the same body of water. Under ideal conditions, with a 20 degree average temperature, it can take about a week to form four inches of ice. An average sized adult needs at least four inches of new clear ice for ice fishing or other small group activities on foot. Five inches of good ice is necessary for snowmobiling. And automobiles and light trucks need at least eight inches to a foot of solid ice. When possible, you should avoid driving on ice altogether. In fact, 60% of all ice fatalities occur in a car, snowmobile, or other vehicle. When it's absolutely essential to drive on the ice, roll your windows down and unfasten your seatbelt. Some experts even recommend driving with the car door slightly ajar to ease your escape. Be prepared to leave the vehicle immediately. And never drive on the ice at night. Darkness conceals dangerous pressure ridges. Sometimes called push-ups or ice heaves, pressure ridges are shaped like an inverted V. They often have thin ice or open water underneath and are deadly traps for cars and snowmobiles. There is still a common notion that just a little nip of alcohol will help keep away the cold. In fact, just the opposite is true. Alcohol actually can make you colder faster and causes potentially fatal errors in judgment. It's also important to remember that more than half of all ice-related accidents involve drinking. Always check with a local bait shop, resort, DNR conservation officer or county sheriff to see if there are any dangerous spots. Also, check to see if there are any aeration systems installed on the lake that have created open water. There will be plenty of warning signs, but they can be difficult to see at night. Unless you're in an enclosed vehicle where one could hamper escape, it's not a bad idea to wear a life jacket under your clothing. Besides helping you to stay afloat and warm if you do break through, it also adds some welcome warmth on cold days. If your car starts to break through, get out as soon as possible. At one time, it was recommended that you stay in the car till it sank, but not any longer. The problem with waiting until your car sinks is uh, oftentimes the car will sink nose first and then turn upside down in the mud. Then there's tons and tons of mud pressing against the doors and you can't open them. And even if you were to get out, it'd be difficult to see the hole from underwater, and especially at night. Many people drown because they can't pull themselves out of the water. 
The weight of water-soaked clothing, combined with the slippery surface of the ice, makes escape extremely difficult. Carry a couple of long nails or homemade ice picks in your pocket to help escape from the ice hole. How should you react if you do break through? First, try not to panic. Your winter clothing, especially a snowmobile suit, will not drag you down. Instead, if you remain calm, it will offer excellent flotation from the air trapped inside. Turn toward the direction you came from. Place your hands and arms on the surface of the ice. This is where your ice picks come in handy. While kicking with your feet, use your ice picks to pull yourself onto the surface. Work forward on the ice while kicking your feet. Once you get to solid ice, roll away from the hole before standing. After a sudden dip in 32 degree water, hypothermia, a lowering of the body's inner temperature, becomes a real danger. Serious cases of hypothermia can lead to death if gone untreated. A rectal temperature of 99.6 degrees Fahrenheit is normal for most adults. By the time a victim reaches 95 degrees, shivering becomes extreme. And by around 78 degrees, unconsciousness occurs, with drowning the most likely outcome. Get to shelter immediately. Remove wet clothing and stay near a source of heat. Warm sugary liquids will help conscious victims recover from the effects of cold water. But never, never give alcohol to anyone suffering from hypothermia. If you see someone fall in, resist the temptation to run out to them. That may result in two victims rather than one. Instead, find something you can extend or throw to the victim to pull them out of the water, such as jumper cables or a pair of skis. Never make direct contact with the victim or offer them your hand. They could pull you in. Another good rescue technique is to slide a lightweight boat across the ice ahead of you to the victim. If the ice starts to crack, you can jump into the boat and push out to the victim with the oars. It's also a good idea to tie a rope to the boat so people on the shore can pull you back in. Hello? Yes, a man fell through the ice on Centerville Lake. If you can't water. rescue the victim immediately, he call 911. Send somebody right away. Often, children and teenagers become victims of ice accidents. About 20% of ice victims are children under 12 years old. Parents and relatives need to warn their children about the dangers of ice. And they should never be near the ice, or any water for that matter, without a parent. Remember, a few minutes of checking ice from shore, as well as systematic checks while on the ice, can help ensure that your winter outing is a safe one.